I mean, I wasn't unaware of the risks that I was taking. I mean, I had already fled Nigeria since November 2020 and shortly after the protest, partly as a result of my involvement in the protest, partly as a result of the work that I had been doing since 2019 and my ticket was already punched. Award-winning Nigerian journalist David Ondane has always dreamt of visiting the Southern African country, Zimbabwe. But when he decided it was time to materialize his dream, Zimbabwean Immigration Service pulled a Mugabe stunt on him once he arrived at the Robert Gabriel Mugabe International Airport in Harare. Oh yes, David Ondane was detained at the airport over his passport and nationality. In a tweet that went viral on Wednesday, July 19, 2023 night, the journalist seeking asylum in Ghana called the attention of everyone to his continued detention in what described as a smelly, tiny and dark room. Initially, many Nigerians assumed the Nigerian government was working undercover with the Zimbabwean government to pull an operation Namdikanu on the celebrated journalist, as they did with Kenya in 2021. Like Namdikanu, we are still facing trial. David Ondane's investigative reports over the years have attacked the integrity of many politicians in Nigeria and have been regarded as a threat to the Nigerian government. So Nigerians even attributed it to xenophobia, stating that Zimbabwe is rarely kind nor respectful to Nigerian tourists. But after much outrage on social media, David was eventually released following a 10-hour detention and then deported from the country. Since his release, the Zimbabwe Permanent Secretary in the Information, Publicity and Broadcasting Service has come out to say his side of the story, likewise David Ondane in a recent interview. Was it all a botched plan to kidnap David like Enamdikanu? Was it xenophobia? Or was it just a passport and visa issue? Hello guys, it's Tico here for African Glitz. I probably wouldn't be here today. If I was definitely if I was in Nigeria right now, I'd probably be dead, quite literally. So um there is there is the, my, my life has been threatened credibly, which is why I was granted asylum to start with. Since running away from Nigeria following the NSAS massacre that upended the lives of many Nigerian youths, investigative journalist David Ondane has been an absolute terror in journalism. The 33-year-old has made the likes of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu peace in his pants after publishing several shocking reports on his age, educational background, the origin of his name, drug charges, children's lavish lifestyle and his Guinea passport. Tinubu isn't alone. The likes of Kazim Shatima, a top business mogul and especially Abike Dabri Erewa have all been at the mercy of the celebrated journalist at some point. Speaking of Abike Dabri Erewa, the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission chairman and David Ondane got into it back in November 2021 for doing nothing about a Nigerian jailed in Ivory Coast until she died in detention. Earlier in March 2021, the journalist broke the news of Itunu Babalola, a trader in Bondoko, Ivory Coast, who was jailed on trumped-up charges. The lady had travelled to Nigeria to check on her sick mother in September 2019. When Itunu returned to Ivory Coast in October 2019, she discovered her apartment was robbed in her absence and her belongings worth 300,000 naira were stolen. When the young lady found who committed the crime and reported it to the police, it turned out the DPO nephew was the suspect and they insisted she accepts a settlement of 100,000 naira, lesser than the worth of her belongings. But it to stood to the ground, leading to her arrest on trumped up charges. She was accused of human trafficking, charged to court and sentenced to 20 years in prison, later reduced to 10 years. Investigative journalist David Ondane broke the news on Twitter after Itunu reached out to him and he called on Abike Dabiri Erewa to step in swiftly to secure a rescue. Sadly, Abike did nothing about it and Itunu died in detention after contracting an infection in prison. During a live radio program on Lagos Talks 91.3 FM where she was a guest, the Nidcom boss appeared to be dodging some questions about Babalola's demise leading to the on-air altercation with David Ondane. At the time, the journalist had no idea it would one day be in late Etunu's position or even need Abike Dabri's help, but almost two years later, that is precisely what happened. On Wednesday, July 19, 2023, the investigative reporter got his fans worried for his life after announcing on his Twitter page that he had been detained in Robert Mugabe International Airport for almost seven hours since he arrived in Harare. I landed in Zimbabwe earlier today and I have been detained at Harare Airport inside a smelly locked room for nearly 7 hours," he tweeted. According to the 33-year-old reporter, his detention was due to his travel documents showing he is Nigerian but currently seeking asylum in Ghana. They said that despite using the travel documents of a country with a visa-free relationship, 
My nationality is still Nigerian and thus, I need a visa, he wrote. Sharing photos of himself and another lady, the investigative report said he and the Ugandan lady were locked in a smelly room for hours. Alongside a lady from Uganda, also a visa-free country, I have been locked in a room with no windows or toilet, plus a bottle of pee on the floor, he tweeted. Later speaking with News24, David Ondain said he has always wanted to visit Zimbabwe since he was at the university over 12 years ago. Before making the trip from Ghana, where he is based and currently seeking asylum from the Nigerian government, the journalist said he checked with the Zimbabwean embassy about travel requirements and they confirmed that he wouldn't need a visa because of his Ghanaian passport. They said as long as the airline was happy to recognize my Ghanaian refugee passport, they had no problem with recognizing it as a Ghanaian passport. It was up to the airline, he added. The investigative reporter went to Harare aboard Ethiopian Airlines with no hassles, only to be detained upon arriving at Robert Mugabe International Airport. I got to Harare, and the next thing I knew, I was being detained entry and processed for removal for not having a visa. They claimed Zimbabwe does not recognize refugee passports as passports, so the visa-free status of Ghanaian passport holders in Zimbabwe did not apply to me, he said. For that, David was considered a Nigerian who came to Zimbabwe without a visa. They locked him up in a tiny room without windows that smelled of urine without any communication or indication about why he was being detained. Luckily, they did not confiscate his phone and he started tweeting to raise the alarm. This immediately caused a fury on Twitter. Some became scared that the Nigerian government would arrest David as they did to Namdi Kanu a few years back. Popular investigative reporter Kemi Olunloyo didn't help matters when she tweeted that Interpol may pick up David soon. The Interpol may arrest David Ondain for inciting people on social media during the NSAS protest and Nigeria decides 2023. Why would he post his Ghana refugee passport online? He is so daft that Ghana may now refuse him asylum claim. Then he is deported to Hashtag Kemi Talks, she wrote. At the same time, many Nigerians who have passed through even worse experiences in some African countries attributed David Ondain's experience to xenophobia and they seized the opportunity to share their own story. While Nidcom boss Abike Dabiri was snoozing, two of David's friends in Zimbabwe, a fellow journalist, Hopewell Chinono and a YouTuber, Wode Maya, took up the matter immediately and brought the matter to the attention of authorities in Zimbabwe. It was when my friends started making calls that things started moving. Prior to that, it seemed they had quite literally forgotten about me in there. The people who locked me in had ended their shifts and gone home, he said. After a 10-hour detention, the journalist was released and deported back to a location he refused to stay for security reasons. David shared a photo of himself confirming his release and wrote, Being escorted to the boarding gate for my flight now. The Ugandan lady appears to be getting sent back to Addis. I'm not sure why. She is visibly upset. Feel very helpless in all this. After arriving his destination, David updated fans on Twitter and wrote, Landed. Safe and well. I was untouched and unharmed. The battery is nearly dead. Will update you when I reach my secondary destination. Thanks for the immense pressure and support. Nick Mangwana the Zimbabwe Permanent Secretary in the Information, Publicity and Broadcasting Service has since come out to explain the Zimbabwe Immigration Service side of the story. In a series of tweets, Mangwana noted that Hondane, while carrying a Nigerian passport, sought asylum in Ghana and travelled to Zimbabwe with the papers. According to him, David came with Ghanaian refuge papers, claiming he was a Nigerian running away from prosecution in Nigeria. However, people in this category still need visas to enter Zimbabwe. He wasn't coming in to work as a journalist. He said he was just coming to visit but without getting a visa in Ghana first. Other parts of his story were also unsatisfactory to the immigration authorities. He was considered not a candidate for entry into Zimbabwe. He explained. Even with his Ghanaian refugee passport, Mangwana argued that Ghanaians are only allowed in Zimbabwe with a visa. Hence, David was promptly arrested, detained and deported. I am sorry that this journalist found himself in this situation. That said, we do have immigration laws in our country that are obligatory to all prospective entrants and no profession is immune to them. If someone's travel document is such that they need a visa, that law applies to everyone, including an award-winning journalist. 
our laws are blind to social stations or attended achievements. The permanent secretary concluded. Following David Ondane's deportation from Zimbabwe, Nigerians have been reacting on social media. This was further intensified after David said the Zimbabwe permanent secretary in the information, publicity and broadcasting service only tweeted a half-truth and later revealed that his phones were stolen. Here are a few reactions. One Twitter user wrote, I was afraid for a minute they were going to pull the Kenyan stunt on you. I am glad you are safe and well and away from Zimbabwe. Another wrote, Thank God. Haters have been thinking to say we go need Abike Dabri eye service assistance. But God passed them. One tweeted, Hmm, I see a strong parallel between the theft of David on Dane's phones and the alleged plans to attack the PEP tribunal justices, Peter Obi and Atiku's legal teams. They are probably trying to unravel the sources of his whistleblowing, meaning David's security is threatened too. Another user wrote, Please, someone close to him should tell him to never visit any African country. They are not safe for anyone like him. Another tweeted, David should learn from his lesson and stay clear of Africa. Africa does not respect the rule of law. They are so corrupt. He should stay far so that what happened to Namdekanu won't happen to him. If he likes, he should keep traveling on around Africa. Tell us guys, what do you think about David on Dane's sad encounter in Zimbabwe? Was it really about his passport and visa? If his phone was seized at the point of detaining him, would the Zimbabwean government have handed him over to the Nigerian government? Most of the past three years, my whereabouts have been a mystery and I have moved around quite a bit, but for much of that time, I was in a safe house in Accra. Share your opinion in the comment section down below. If you found this video informative, please comment, like and share. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more well-researched African stories and news we know you would like. Click on the bell sign to be notified every time you upload a new video so that you don't miss out. Thanks for watching and see you on our next one.